Hello there my dear viewers. In this video I will pick up where I left off at the earlier Ichimoku Kinkuhiu trading strategies that I have coded into algorithmic trading sets for the Fractrade trading bot a while ago. You can find all these strategies in the book How to Make Money Trading the Ichimoku System by Belkrishna Sadakar. All the earlier videos I made are appearing at the upper right corner right about now. And I have also created some other posts at my DutchAlgoTrading.com website. In this video I am going to create the Kijun Cross strategy from the named book in code so that I can use this with my trading bot. This way I can backtest if the strategy is suited for crypto trading. And the nice thing about this strategy is that these are all signals for long and short trades. So in this case we can use also the futures trading option. And hopefully maximize trading opportunities because we can trade in both directions now. Also because I will create this strategy myself, I can determine the exact code to use and how the strategy will use this. Now, the basic strategy rules are as follows. Initiate a long position when the price closes above the Kijun and initiate a short position when the price closes below the Kijun. And the signal can also occur at different positions from the Kumo cloud. Each position has its own signal strength. So, for the bullish long trades, if the price closes above the Kijun and this crossover is above the Kumo, then it is considered a strong bullish signal. And if the price closes above the Kijun but the crossover is below the Kumo, then it's considered a weak bullish signal. And there is also when the price closes above the Kijun and it is within the Kumo, it is considered a neutral bullish signal. And this also counts for the short trades. So if the price closes below the Kijun and it's below the Kumo, then it's considered a strong bearish signal. And if the price closes below Kijun and above the Kumo, then it will be a weak bearish signal. And again, when the price closes below Kijun and it is within the Kumo, then it is considered a neutral bearish signal. For the stop loss signal and the trailing stop loss signal, the stop loss will be initially set below the Kijun. And in the book there is also a small buffer proposed. But since it's not clear how this buffer is set or which indicator to use, I will use the close below Kijun for the stop loss signal. And again, it will also be used for the trading stop loss. Now the author also proposed to use partial profit takings for this strategy. However, since the trading bot does not have this capability, I will not use this. Therefore, the exit signal determines the ideal exit moment in this case. Now, because this strategy has three kinds of signals, strong, neutral and weak, it would be an interesting idea to see which of the three signal strengths come out best. Therefore, I will create three different strategies to test and find out which has the best chance for making future profits. I will leave this notebook as a blog post on my DutchAlgoTrading.com website in a post. However, the complete notebook with all the initial code and graphs will be left as a post on my Patreon site. Also, I will leave the complete output of the backtests on that side as well. So, if you want to use the code for your own benefits, then please become a supporter for this channel. And one final note here is that I will not explain each and every line of code you see. I assume that you already have some knowledge of Python, Pandas, Jupyter Notebooks and Fractrate. And you might say that this is a video for intermediary algo developers here. So if you cannot follow this, then read and watch my earlier posts and videos. They are an excellent source of knowledge that can bring you up to speed here. Now let's create that algo strategy. Now first of all I have to load the necessary modules. And these will be also used in the definite strategy file for Fractrade, so take care of this. And since I'm using Google Callup here. I'm going to upload the JSON data file that comes from the Fractrade bot and upload it to the Google Callup notebook. After that I will check the dataset on its dimensions and other information. 
So first let's upload the JSON file from the Fractrate bot with the BTC data. And then create a data frame that consists of all the data. Now the data frame info function provides the information about the data frame, such as number of rows and columns, and the data type of each column, and the amount of memory used by the data frame. Then with data frame describe, I generate a descriptive statistic of the numerical columns in the data frame, such as the count, mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and quartile values. Now I will create a tuple that represents the dimensions of the data frame. And also I will return a list of the columns names in the data frame. Here I will return a list of the row indices of the data frame. And finally I will return a series containing the data types of each column and like that. Now it's nice to know all this metadata of the data frame, but I actually want to see what data is inside of it. So let's return the first five rows of the data frame to see what's inside. And I can also do that with the five last rows. So that's all swell and all, but now that we know a little bit of the complete data set, let's install the pandas ta library and create the Ichimoku indicator. So here I will install pandas ta in the Collab notebook. And then finally I can import the pandas ta module and create the Ichimoku indicator in it. So you can see here that I specify the length of each indicator. And by the way, these are the default lengths of the Ichimoku. And what I do here is I add a column for each Ichimoku indicator and this uses the variables I defined a little bit earlier. And now that I have the data frame of all the Kindle information and the indicator, let's show it on my screen. Now don't be afraid that you see NAN values in these cells, because that is the way the Ichimoku has been built up. And if you don't know this inside information, then please watch my earlier videos where I explain this. And now that I have all this information in my data frame, let's create the signals. And again, in this video I will create only the strong bullish signals. On my Patreon site I will continue further with this video and create the neutral and weak signals. But let's continue here. Recall that the long signals are as follows. If price closes above the Kijun and this crossover is above the Kumo, it is considered a strong bullish signal. So in pseudocode it will look like this. Here I define that the Kijun should be above the cloud. And it does not matter if the cloud is bearish or bullish. Also the close price should be above the Kumo cloud. And finally I determine the rule where the price close is above the Kijun. So with these rules in place I can also create the signal for shorts and they will be as follows. Here you can see that the Kijun should be below the cloud and the close price should be below the Kumo cloud. And finally the price close should be below the Kijun. And now that I have this pseudo code in place, I can create the following cells where I create the real signals that together will create the definite buy and sell signal. First I will create the buy long signal and then the sell short signal. So let's just try this with one signal first. And here Kijun should be above Senku A and Kijun should be above Senku B to make the signal true. And also let's show the last locations of the named columns where the Kijun is above the cloud. Now that I have the first part of the complete signal, let's create the second one. And here I define the close price that should be above the Senku A and Senku B to let the signal be true. And you can see here in this data frame that these are the true values where close is above the cloud. 
Now the third part of the total buy signal is when the close price is also above the Kijun. So let's code this here. And again, show the last rows of the named columns. And these are also true, so that looks good. Let's put it all together now. The buy long signal can only be true if the Kijun is above the Kumo, the close is above Kumo and close is above Kijun and that they are all true. So now that I have this in the data frame, I can show all the definitive buy signals for the bot here. And this looks all pretty good. So with this definitive buy long signals, the bot can at least do some bullish trades. Now to also make the bot go short with futures, the code above can be reused to also create the sell short signals. And for these short signals, we have to reverse the bigger than conditions to lower than. So that's pretty easy. Now, luckily for me, I prepared this all, so it's just a matter of copy and pasting, so that you can see what I did. And now you can see the data frame, where all the signals are bearish, and that there is a definitive sell short signal over here. Now that I have defined all the enter trade signals, it's now time to create the exit signals. And remember here that all the exit signals are valid if the close price closes below the Kijun Sen under the long trades, and above Kijun when there are short trades. Also, this is considered a trading stop loss. So here is the exit signal for longs and here is the exit signal for shorts. Now let me show the data frame info again and see how the data frame has been extended with all these additional columns. And here the other data frame info. The last thing I can do here before coding this data frame into actual working bot algos is to show how the strategy will look as a plot. And for this demonstration I will use different methods here. So let me start with the first one. And in this case I will use matplotlib spyplot. And it's also nice to define the number of days here so that you can make a little bit more detailed plot. Otherwise you will get a plot that consists of the complete data frame, which can be pretty large. And as you can see in this plot here, you can also see where the bot has his long trades and its short trades, defined by the green and red triangles. And you also might notice that the dates are not shown on the X axis. Now personally I'm not too worried about that because you can see that these are the row numbers. And my primary objective here is to see if the signals are correct. And here in this next plot I will create, I have also colored the Kumo cloud. And also the buy and sell periods are changed to horizontal lines at the bottom of the plot. And to be honest, I really like this plot, but that's more of a personal opinion. I think it's a very nice clear example with a nice bar that indicates the buy and sell periods below the chart. However, I will also make this final plot here. And in this example, I will use the Plotly library. And you might recognize this layout because it's also used by the Fractrate bot and its developers. And you can see here in this example that the bot buys when the price is above the Kijun and all is above the Kuma cloud. So this really looks good to me. So to finalize this video, up until now I have shown you how you can use Google Colab, Pandas and Python to roughly test out and plot the Kijun crossover strategy for strong signals. The outlines for the real algorithmic code are laid out here. And the real ALCO code that can be read by TradingBot should be made now. Now I will continue in this notebook and also create the neutral and weak signal codes as well. And I will also add my own variant and that is to not use the Kumo cloud as a signal type indicator. It just buys when uh, the price is above the Kijun and sells when the price is below the Kijun. I will also create the code for spot and futures trading and also for each type of signal. This way I can test out all variants of this strategy and compare them with the scores in my own strategy league. 
I will do this all off video so you will not be bored with this tedious process. And in another backtesting video I will test out all the variants of this strategy to find out which version has the highest probability for future gains in algorithmic trading. All notebooks, files, plots and other backtesting output will be exclusively available for my patrons. And also the continuation of the rest of this notebook will be on my Patreon site as bonus content. So consider that as a part 2 of this video. And also by becoming a patron you also support a small content creator. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.